In my hands right here, I have a pair of Guidi boots, and we're gonna look at these today, but the biggest thing I wanna know is how comfortable are they? Because I have always been told that Guidi makes the most comfortable boots out of the box that you could ever, ever imagine. And I have some other boots. I have some stuff to compare these to. So are these really that comfortable compared to other stuff out there? Or is it all just marketing? Let's find out. So before we look at the Guidi boots, we have to set a baseline with a leather boot rating scale. So I've got a few other pairs of leather boots that we're gonna compare these two. So we've gotta try those on first and figure out how comfortable I find them and why. To keep this nice and easy, I'm just gonna go with a zero to 10 rating scale. Zero means they are like putting nails on your feet and walking around in those and 10 is like, walking on on marshmallows or something and if you're here for the guidi stick around we will be getting to those oh i promise you but first i think you're gonna have fun seeing the boots i already own as we figure out how comfortable they actually are let's do it all right let's take a look at the balenciaga bb rim boots uh these are like a patent leather and I don't know, I do not find these incredibly comfortable. I've made a video saying that I was overall actually kind of disappointed with them. I think they look great, but it's it's the feel and some of the aspects specifically related to the leather that I don't think work for these. So it's a patent leather, so it's got like this thick plastic, some sort of plasticky coating on it. That's what gives it that like super shine look. But the thing is, it really doesn't move with you. When I have to crouch, move my foot around, whatever, when I lift my heel, you get lots of creasing. And the thing that you don't see that you really can't see is that the reason it's creasing is because the leather is giving some resistance. So what that means is that especially around the ankle area, the, the tips of the boot, those are putting resistance into my ankle, pushing against me. And that's what's causing those creases and it actually like digs into you where if you were to wear these all day you would start to feel that like if you didn't have socks on that go over the length of the ankle they would actually probably be cutting into you after a full day of wearing them breaking them in eventually will begin to help but especially with these patent boots with like a plastic layer on top they're they're not going to break in as well as a more natural leather so in the end, on the Balenciaga BB rim boots, I'm going to have to give them like a, oh man, 3 out of 10 in the comfort scale for the leather. I mean, I could definitely imagine worse leathers. I had a pair of uh, Doc Martens that were probably the worst I've ever had, but these are, these are pretty close. It's, you can do much better than this in terms of leather comfort and quality. Okay, let's talk about a pair of boots that I really don't show on the channel all that much. I don't think I ever actually made a video about them. I've had them for a long time since the sort of early days on the channel, but I actually do get a decent amount of use out of them. And these are the Gucci Monogram Duck Boots. You can see they have like a kind of uh, rubber toe box and sole that covers most of it but then it's this monogram embossed all over leather for the rest of the boot. And these um, I've always found very comfortable. That's why I've never gotten rid of them and why they still get a good amount of use out of me. They're actually quite practical. That monogram stamped leather is incredibly soft. So you can probably see as I'm moving around doing different things here, the leather is moving with me instead of creasing and working against me. So I think that's what makes it able to be stamped with that monogram is how soft it is. And it actually adds to the comfort of the boot and makes it one of the more comfortable leathers I've actually ever had on a boot. So in the, in the rating scale, I'm gonna have to give these like an eight. They're actually, people talk about luxury stuff being unwearable a lot of the time, but these are actually very practical boots and very comfortable as well. All right, let's chat about these Raf Simmons Runner Beetle Boots. They're called the uh, Cylon 21s, I believe, if I remember correctly. And these are probably the closest, in terms of the leather, to like a, uh, 
a sneaker. You know, if you buy like a Jordan or something, that hyper-processed, like pigment-coated or plastic-coated leather, this feels very, very much like that kind of cheap Nike leather that you see on all of their stuff. And for that reason, it's gonna rate pretty low. You can see as I'm moving around, it's really struggling to kind of move with me. It's giving some resistance, some creasing, and also it's got multiple panels because you've got all these stitches going up the front and across the toe box. And that's just cause it, get, it actually gives the boots more structure, which makes them stiffer, interestingly. I think if, if it had just been one piece, it would have actually moved with me a little better. So similar to the Balenciaga BB rim boots, these, as if you wear them all day, they're gonna start cutting into your ankles from the pushback that that leather is giving you. And also just wearing it around, you can feel it's, it's kind of light and cheap feeling in the leather. So you don't even get that satisfaction of knowing it's like a really, really high grade material that they're using. So this one, what did I give? The, the BB rooms were a three. Uh, these, oh man, but here's the thing. The BB rims were patent, so they have this super heavy coating on them, which these do not have. So they do move a little better than that. So I'll give them one point more. I'll give these a four out of 10. All right, the Balenciaga Santiago boots. These ones, you've probably seen them before. They've got that pointed toe that flips upwards, kind of this old school, almost medieval kind of look, but then you've got this really nice black heel. So these boots are some of my favorites from the look of them, first of all, but also for this video, we've got to talk about the leather. So these are actually like a, a suede or new buck. I'm not sure exactly what I'm assuming, like a nice high quality suede. They are incredibly comfortable and it's because I think the uh, grain pattern of suede is looser than like a top grain leather or something like that. So it moves with you much more. Again, as I'm moving around, you can see there's no creasing whatsoever. That suede is kind of just moving around with me as I do it. And that makes it a very, very pleasant wear. So they're incredibly comfortable to wear, but it is a bit unfair because suede is very different from pure, you know, full grain or whatever leather. So these, you know, they're like a nine. I think they're even a step above the Gucci's, but I, I recognize slightly different in terms of the fabrication. All right, the last boots we're gonna use for comparison here are the Rick Owens Kiss boots. And these, of course, are quite different from any of the others we're using for comparison here, but they are a legitimate leather boot, so why not use them? Um, the leather itself, it's a really nice leather. You can tell super high quality just by looking at it, feeling it, smelling it, all that good stuff, all those senses, but it is thick which is good, but thick also makes it stiff. So if these were like an all around leather boot, if these were like a lace up or something like that, I think they would be quite uncomfortable. But the saving grace for the Kiss boots is that they're Chelsea boots. So they have that kind of mesh fabric along the sides that allows them to stretch. So when I move around in these, instead of the leather giving resistance, that Chelsea side, the mesh, it just stretches with me. So it feels much, much more comfortable than it would be if it was a different type of boot. So the Chelsea aspect saves it. So these are gonna be like a, let's say like a six or seven out of 10. Let's give it like a 6.5. I can imagine them being more comfortable, but considering like what they are, they're surprisingly comfortable to wear. So now that we all know how I feel about how comfy the boots in my collection currently are, let's get back to this pair of brand new Guidi boots and unbox them and see what we've got. All right, so this is the box that Guidi boots come in, and it is probably the most nondescript shoe box I have ever seen. This is not the box they were shipped in. This is the shoe box. And I 100% would have forgiven you for thinking this was the shipping box because that's what it looks like. It's just white cardboard, the end. The only indication you get that it has anything to do with Guidi or even boots is this stuff on the side. 
So this is actually like a big boy clear sticker here with black print on it. Barcode, you get the brand logo up here, that square logo up in the top right next to the barcode. We get some info here, model number. We get the fabrication goat full grain. There we go. And lined size 44. We'll definitely be talking about sizing later because there's I believe some interesting stuff to say there based on what I've heard. You get the classic, most luxury brands do this, the wireframe outline of the boot itself. So we can see this is a cool kind of inward block heel going on here and some other stuff. Very cool that we'll get to. And then we've got another sticker over here. I believe this was put on by the, um, the shop that sold it. Same stuff, model number, sizing, where it was made, fabrication, all of that good stuff. But now it's the moment of truth. We can open these up and look. And I don't think I've told you guys yet, this is not your average pair of Guidi boots. These have a little a little something something going on to them that makes them a little special. So unveiling, let's do it. Oh, that's, that's actually not as impactful as I thought it would be. They're in dust bags, as they should be, really. Um, one thing that I thought was really cool is they do have like a legit checking system built in. Uh, I think it says some of them, they have it somewhere else, like they put it on the box here, but at least for this pair, it's like under, under the sole of the left shoe. That's kind of wild, actually. Little envelope here with that logo. Let's see what's inside. Usually it's some sort of like documentation, uh, disclaimer type of thing. And it is like a little pamphlet here, Italian and English. Uh, let's read the first little bit. Greedy footwear has been crafted in Italy from the most refined skins available. They're absolutely known for their leather from various types of animals. They even like sell it to other people to make their stuff out of. It's very, very, very well respected. Basically what like Loro Piana is to knits, Guidi is to skins. Handmade, tanning, nourish and clean it. Yes, 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 yes. How to store it. Good info. All right, back to this here. So we've got the dust bag. Is there a logo on it? Oh, they're actually totes. That's really cool. Um, no print or anything as far as I can tell. Yeah, just like pure white. And there's two totes in here, each one with a boot in it. Okay, now we get to the moment of truth. Bum, 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 bum. Yep. So you're already seeing. I told you there was something different about these. Boom. Glitter painted. So they are blue leather uh goat or a horse have calf i think there's a few different maybe types here this like black glitter paint and then it goes all the way down and it drips down that stacked leather sole i love the look of this already the construction it's so classic but with a very like modern cut hell yeah so where to even begin here um, so we've already seen the paint. That's so cool. Let's just, this is really about comfort and about leather, this video. So that's what the most time we're spending on is look at that pattern, that natural skin pattern, the wrinkles and everything. I'm not going to give anything away right now, but like, God damn, that's some nice leather. You can distinctly see each stacked layer on that block heel and also the slight angle inwards that it goes. At the sole, look at that construction. You get the nails visible in there, different layers visible. You got the stamped size, 44, right at the center there. You can see all the stitches going around. They just don't shy away from showing their work. You know, you can see the construction in it. It's essentially like the opposite of mass produced. This style has the zipper at the back of the shoe. It is, of course, a metal zipper. If, if you got a plastic zipper on these, um, it would be a crime. <laughs> you know what I mean? I really like this slightly tarnished metal, and it actually has the, the logo pressed in there, that square logo. If you look at the inside of these, they're actually Excella brand zippers, which is something I'm completely unfamiliar with. I've never heard of Excella before, but it seems like a nice zipper. 
it really is like a hefty zip. I just unzipped them and it was like a satisfying sound. You get this light little leather counter here to protect the inside of the shoe from the zipper itself. Such clean stitching going around the edges and fully leather on the inside too. It actually looks like a slightly different pattern than the outside. It may be a different type of leather. This has like a larger set of wrinkles, whereas these ones are, are tighter. You get the size and whatnot pressed in on the inside there. And then let's look at the inside, at the insoles or the soles. I'm not sure exactly what the deal is here. Look at the color on these, by the way. So sick. You can even see, I think that's a, a bruise there. So very like natural, natural leather. God damn, it's hard to get a, a camera in there. So you've got the logo right there. Uh, the square logo and then underneath that it says made in Italy I'm trying to shine my phone flashlight in there at the same time that I'm filming it's like a nightmare but that, that that's what it is and it seems like those insoles are like glued down or something in some way taped down so the sort of logo would be I think it said under the left boot I'm not going to take that up but that's where it would be on this pair and like I don't even know if I have anything else to say about these they just like are what they are, and I very much appreciate what they are. I just think they're absolutely sick, at least in terms of looks. But I think the time has come. We've looked at them. Now it's time to wear them. Much as we did with the other boots I have, let's throw these on, talk about it, and give them our comfort rating. Is it all hype? Or... Are these the most comfortable boots out of the box that you can buy? Let's do it. Holy crap. Listen, I'm not going to force you to like these. If they're not your thing, that's fine. But you have to appreciate everything going on on these. But I think I'm going to save my rating till towards the end of this little, little talk here. So first, let's talk about the sizing. If you're a regular watcher of the channel, you'll notice that I bought a 44 of these, but I almost always, for other things, buy a 43. And that's because I had heard and read pretty much everywhere on the internet that you need to size up for these, and that is 100% true. I usually wear a 43, these are a 44, so a full size up, and they are still very snug. So depending on where you fall in the sizing range, you need to either size up one or two sizes for Guidi boots. But that being said, I think we finally reached the time. Let's talk about comfort. So, drum roll please. The rating on these, I'm gonna add the sound effects so the drum roll is probably going right now. It's real exciting. Uh, these are going to rate nine out of 10. Yes, nine out of 10, this is now my most comfortable pair of boots in my collection, and let me explain why. I mean, I, I thought about it, and I guess I really don't need to explain much more than it's great leather. It is the softest, most supple, most broken in leather I could possibly imagine ever, ever existing. Is it leather if it's like not even a cow? I don't know, that's something I should probably know, but I'll look into it later. It's a nice skin, you feel me? All right, we're good with that. But there are also some other elements going on here, both the cut of it and just the style, the type that they do. Those are different, I promise. So first, let's talk about the cut. You can see that the shape of these, um, they are very tight up at the like ankle calf area, and they kind of go off. Like they don't go straight up, they kind of go at an off angle, like an over 90 degree angle. And that makes it really nice because the, the leather is so soft. If this was a tough leather, this would be an unbearably uncomfortable shoe. But because the leather is so soft, that tight, tight ankle calf makes it really move nicely and really break with you as you step. And then the other thing is that kind of the, the style of the shoe, the, the type that they do. You'll notice that pretty much inevitably you get tons of creasing at the curve from your foot to your ankle. Just standing normally there is creasing there. It almost looks like you're wearing a sock or something. And that's by design. That's like the greedy look. That's what they do. 
but it also helps just keep things moving with you and keeping things comfortable. It's a little bit of extra skin there, extra, extra material that makes the boot move with you and makes it feel that much more comfortable. But those, the last couple of things, they're relatively minor. In the grand scheme, just about anything in this material by Guidi would be more comfortable than pretty much anything else on the market. So those are the Guidi boots. Man, that is impressive. Whew, I'm excited to have these. All right, thank you so much for watching. Check out the other video on screen here. Subscribe to my channel, like this video, and I'll see you next time.